Hey, so my name is Travis Rain. Um, I'm a graduate research assistant here at uh, South Dakota State University. Um, I work on under Dr. Stephen Chips, um, and uh, in particular, I work on uh, brown trout in Spearfish Creek. So Spearfish Creek's mean biomass is about uh, three times greater than other comparable Black Hill streams, and uh, the adult brown trout in Spearfish Creek are about 30% smaller. So, so what we're seeing is this high abundance high biomass, um, uh, reduced growth rate, reduced size structure system. Um, and, and one management strategy for improving those growth rates uh, would be density manipulations. Um, so, so localized reductions in density, and, th and that's what I'm working on. The intuitive um, solution to this would be um, angler harvest, however, um, due to social stigmas associated with catch and release and just pure um, angler harvest within the hills, it's, it's highly unlikely that we could reach um, harvest levels that would, be, um, uh, would, would, would give us the desired effects of those density reductions. So um, what I'm doing is, is looking at um, the effects um, uh, of, of large scale density reductions on localized portions of Spearfish Creek, in particular growth. Uh, movement, abundance. Um, so, um, and, and what you're going to see here today is is uh, the 2017 sampling event. Um, and we we are uh, backpack electrofishing in, in one of those sites, and and so um, Spearfish Creek. I broke it up into two reaches: um, the Canyon Reach and the Town Reach. Um, the Canyon Reach being Spearfish Canyon, um, Maurice intake to uh, uh, Cheyenne Crossing, and the Town Reach pretty much being the the city limits of, of Spearfish Creek, and within those two reaches, there's 14 sites, um, which you'll you'll see today. A, a couple sites that, that Brandon um, um, uh, took some video on, and and we we uh, took seven of those sites uh, randomly and and removed 50% of the brown trout um, over 100 millimeters um, in in those sections, and that was in 2016. Um, and then and then in 2017, we came back and resampled all those sites. Um, in, in conjunction with both years, we're taking um, otoliths um, for, for age growth analysis, um, and, and we're also, um, we deployed pit tags um, in 2016, and you'll see a little bit in the footage here today of, of some of those recaps, standing, scanning fish for those pit tags, these passive integrated transponders, um, um, to see uh, or get a handle on individual growth rates. Uh, we, I also deployed 40 uh, radio tags to track movements to see if these these density reductions are having large effects on these movements. Um, what is the baseline movement of Spearfish Creek? Do, do, does it follow the literature of, of small movements, small home ranges of brown trout? Or um, are these um, large scale density reductions or fish moving from these, these um, natural high density areas to these newfound low density areas? So uh, today, again, you're going to see those, um, those uh, sampling events. Um, and, and a little bit of working up those fish. And currently we're analyzing the data. We, we um, um, finished up our 2016 and 2017 field season and, um, and we're, we're in data analysis um, right now. So uh, with that, um, I hope you enjoy this stuff and I just want to thank Brandon for, for putting this all together, helping with my project and, and packing around a GoPro during, during a little bit of the field work. So thank you.